So, round wood, the warrior's tomb, where mighty warrior might die or be remembered. So, what do we know? Well, we know... Let's get this up now. So, we know that it's near Kirk Heaton, but we've also got a Kirk Burton as well. But a kirk just means a parish. But it's important for the name. Now, the earliest mention and acknowledgement we've got of the round wood, of round wood, is the warrior's tomb by Chaz, maybe Charles, but Chaz P. Hobkirk. Hobkirk who writes it down in a book. So then we've got the acknowledgement of it that he notes that it's rather interesting and strange. So it is actually about 40 metres high and it is a liberty cap shaped and it aligns what I've... My, my investigations are clearly evident that it aligns and it's got a shape and alignment with Old Oswestry Hill Fort. It's big enough to be a hill fort and it is three and a half kilometres away from a hill fort and exactly measure that distance by double and you get Mel from Chap, Dunelm, which is not a random measurement. It's so like that distance and then twice that distance exactly measured out. This is getting into the type of work that Howard Crew is doing. From the Warrior's Mound, there is a, a exact line a perfect line on the horizon where the platform, the upper level of Castle Hill, Hill Fort, is perfectly visible. And when you go on a pool hill, which is another long barrow shaped feature, the other side of Dunelm, which is at Marsden, which is called Morden, which means big, it's like a big long barrow, well, it is a natural barrow. When you get onto Pool Hill, as you start walking up the tail end of it and look across exactly with a horizontal line of the, the ridge is perfectly the platform of Castle Hill is also visible on the alignment. Um, and when you stood on... Um, when you actually stood on Dunelm, you can't see um, the round wood, but you can see Castle Hill. And then when you turn around 180 degrees, you can actually see the ridge um, where a line to where Pool Hill is over the back. So going, going towards Marsden. Now, I think this was known about. I think the military flew planes over, took photos. You've got people who just know things can understand things generally. I think the importance of our area historically with the Bugantes and the sites was known. There were a lot of other sites like Ossestry, um, you know, there were other hill forts in Yorkshire like Barrick and Elmet and, and other ones, but there aren't as many, nowhere near as many as they are down south where they get more heavily densely frequent. And the thing about Ours is there are some beautiful ones, don't get me wrong, but it, there is something unique and spectacularly beautiful about it in the middle of the valley with the Pennines behind it looking from Upper Hopton. And it, it's the fact of symbolic that the rivers form in the Pennines, that the bridge of the Pennines and, and then the rivers form and then you've got this major, 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 major it's it's the the birth of a major, major, major river route to the ocean, which is um the air, the the corn, the air, and the ghoul, the humber. So this site and the fact that it's very, 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 very central to all of England, I think it's significant. Now I'm gonna go into some dates and things in a minute but we've got what happens is we're talking about someone starting to investigate it and record it archaeologically now this is the first instance we actually get archaeological interest in it other than the casual writings um you know of travelers and people like that 
Oh, we've got the record of it being turned into a um, fortify, fortification license from when after William the Conqueror, the Domesday Book, and, and we've got records of people in the area. But other than it, it being turned into a fort and then Murphy Castle, we don't really have any other acknowledgement of it. Um, we've got on some old maps, on the John Speed maps, there's a very, very steep big mound, but he puts it at Hart's Head, oddly. Um... We've got the Roman. The Romans mentioned it Cambodunum, but they didn't write anything else than that, other than give give a name for the area. So it was acknowledged. Now, what strikes me is that nine thirty nine is when, not a year before or a year after, nine thirty nine is when Varley cites the date of his excavation starting. Yet nine thirty nine is the date. World War II started. That is the day it started. Now, if you were going to... Now, the thing is that Varley is actually from Huddersfield, though. I didn't know that. Didn't know that he was from Huddersfield. But he, he wasn't constantly excavating it between 1939 and 1972. He was going all over the place. He was teaching at Liverpool... Um, he was going abroad, he was going to overhill forts, excavating and teaching then at Hull later on, then he went abroad. He wasn't he wasn't constant he was clearly excavating it in different stages on and off between that time. So and actually some of his work that I've read has actually some of his um opinions and writings and dating have been found now to not have been correct or to be inaccurate. So some of his work on some of his sites have actually been disproved, exactly. So, now, being from Huddersfield, though, he should have known about the round wood, and at that, in 1939, he didn't have anything built on it. Now, it might have had crop fields on it, and it might have been difficult to um, actually excavate and find any evidence on it if, if the farmer's on the round wood. But it strikes me as well as... Unusual that when he officially starts doing the excavations to find out something substantial, some actual hard evidence, um, and, and dig up that he, he can make notes of. This is when the war, war kicks off. Now, the thing is then, the war lasted for six years. The war lasts for six years. So, either everyone's then distracted with a massive big distraction, not unlike the Russian war going on now and COVID dropping and things like that happening, but six years of war when we're all forced into service to do things for the war. Now, this is also not long after... Um, nine. So the Yorkshire show was in 1907... And then we've got this, um, we've got all this thing going on with Ramsden. This Sam Copley goes to Australia, comes back with loads of money, sells to a corporation that's made by the king to supposedly give it as filled to the people. Yeah, it's His Majesty's Council. He's not giving it to the people. He's taking it off Ramsden, who's hardcore liberal area, solid liberal, Whig all the way through, sided with the Whigs in the Civil War, opposed the king, overthrew the king, until the king came back in, dug Cromwell's bones up, dragged him around everywhere. Still liberal. We get this... taken off of, from Ramsden, and who, 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 he was extended royal family, but he, he, he a baronet, but um, he was liberal... A member of the royal family whose family sided with the opposition, the Viscount, didn't he? Because he was a Whig. Now, we've got this um, area. Now, at this point in the war, it's still liberal when Varley starts excavating, and when the war breaks out, it's still liberal. So, the war. So the, the six years, 
1939 to 1945. Now, what's happening during those six years to Round Wood when there's a distraction of the war, but Valley started excavating? Because he's an archaeologist, is he still excavating while everyone's panicking from the war and, um, you know, in bunkers and getting video messages and not knowing what's going on? What's happening at Round Wood, right? Or is, is Valley... If Valley starts in 1939, then how is he excavating if he's got well with the war? So was there something going on at Roundwood? We don't know while he's distracted with the war, if it happened to be a site of, if there could have been something found there, discovered there to prove that it is a Hillfort and Brigante site, which it clearly is, being the shape, manner, style and dimensions of a Hillfort platform, liberty shaped. It's a liberal area, the area is associated with Whigs because of Liberty and Liberty Caps, and um, it's, it's three and a half kilometres from another hill fort. Varley knows all about hill forts because he's been to Maiden Castle and Oswestry. In fact, Varley excavated Oswestry, so he, should have, he could have checked the alignment of the point of that, even though he didn't have Google Earth and Google Maps back then. He should have not, noted the shape because there were some old maps of round wood. He, could have noted, he should have noted the shape of the warrior tomb with Old Oswestry. And he actually excavated one that's in between near Ellesmere. Now, I've looked at the preliminary... I haven't seen the whole valley excavations, but from what I've read, he doesn't mention... In the preliminary work, in the write-up, he doesn't mention anything about Roundwood. Someone told me that he does mention it in his excavations, but the part, the bits that I've looked at on the internet, he doesn't mention it in, unless he mentions it in the full version, which I haven't got. Now, a look, uh, somebody from Bradford University did an investigation into Castle Hill for the dissertation, and they have not mentioned Roundwood at all, except for there was one archaeological find near Roundwood, right? Roundwood, which was an axe. A prehistoric axe or an Iron Age axe. It, it was an axe, right? Which we'll get into in a minute. From his point of view, he just got here too. We'll get all this, we'll get 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 this Kirkwood axe out in a minute, right? In fact, I found a toy plastic axe up at, um, when I went to, when I went to collect Liberty Caps um, locally. When I actually get get Solomon up at um, up at Meltham, up at um, West Nab, somebody threw a plastic axe there actually, a toy axe, and that was a lot of years ago. Anyway, if I'd, if I'd mentioned that, so what's happening for these six years? I need to get hold of the full Valley paper so I know which years he did what, because he was just bobbing there at odd times. Six years of war distraction to 1945. Now, after the war in 1945, he doesn't publish the full work until 1972. Now, we've got nine to ten years between 1945 then after the war when he is excavating castle hill among other places nine years then right um 45 oh no sorry it's nine years until 1955 1954 1955 right that he's got nine years and this is when george Hague builder Builds on the Warriors' mound. Now, I don't know why they do that if Farley hasn't yet finished excavating Castle Hill and come to any conclusions about it and its insignificance in the local area in relation to other sites that might be around it, which I find rather unusual, and building on it would write it off. Now, did Farley do some excavations on there or not to to find out whether it, it was relevant or not. It, it's, it's, it's relevant by it being there. It automatically is relevant because it exists, because it is there, and it is a little bit shaped 40 metre high mound, 3.5 kilometres from Hillfort, which is platform topped also and in perfect alignment, so it has a horizontal... Um, he has a horizontal um, 
land ridge perfectly straight visible from the top of there just like the castle hill is from pool hill perfectly visible alignment now all this stuff with ramsden and sam copley as well gets passed over So this field corporation and they start making trams out there, I think from somewhere around 1920, I've just been looking at that early today, 1920, it's to do with them building the trams out, Imperial Chemical Industries and, um, but it, it's still liberal, now it's solid liberal all the time, while Valley's excavating, and then we've got these nine years of his excavations after the war, then, mysteriously, the area goes over to Labour control. Labour managed to get control of the council for a three-year term, and that's when permission is given to build on the Roundwood. The Liberals don't give permission for it. I don't think it being Liberty Shape, the Liberals would want to give permission to build on it. Now, however Labour got voted in, I don't know. Because there is... You know, it seems, why would it happen then? It's almost like a perfect excuse for it because a different party was in control. And then it goes to no control and back to liberal. Solid. Now, I, what I don't understand is if Ramsden's liberal and if all the local voters are liberal, why does Ramsden need to sell it off to Copley who sells it off for no profit to the council but... Yeah, it's His Majesty King George's Council, so the king owns it, really. He ain't given it to the people. If he'd given it to the people, then he'd splice it up into sections and then he'd say, oh, he can have a bit of land each and then you own it. But he didn't. Council own it, it's His Majesty's government. But yet they're still voting Liberal, which is what Ramsden is. So it's not like the locals have said, oh, we're not supporting... Um, Ramsden anymore we don't spot Liberal they still spot Liberal all the way through until mysteriously 1955 when it goes to Labour and then they build on it and then it goes back to Liberal again all the way up till 1970 now Varley publishes the work in 1972 so it's almost like it goes Liberal after Varley finishes and then this is when we get um, oh look it's Barry Shearman by this time, they've transformed and built a liberal area into... They've created and intended to create a labour area. And then there's Barry Sherman to represent it. So what do you want to make here? Well, it's strongly liberal here, which does symbolise freedom, you know, and um, it's a beautiful area, so let's make a mess of it and let's have everyone working in factories and make them proud of it as well and really proud of it, um, even though they're liberal all the way through while they're making it. You know, they don't go, it's not like they're going to you know, start voting Labour straight away. They aren't voting Labour, they're voting Liberal until it's all built up. And then it goes to Labour and then they build on the, you know, on, the, on, the, on the Bastion bit and then, but then it goes back to Liberal again, up to 1970. So to me, it's very, very unusual. I don't know why... Ian Railston doesn't recognise that warrior man in his hill forts, likely because Varley didn't. If Varley would have acknowledged it, I reckon Railston would have acknowledged it as well. But I don't know what Varley's playing at if he's from Huddersfield. That's the thing. Now, after George Haig builds on there, the houses, which we've got all the records for, there's a lot going on. And... It's called Round Wood, but we've got Kirk Eaton and Kirk Burton. And then we get, in the 1970s, you see, we get this American television programme. And the main character is Captain James T. Kirk. And he's got a spaceship, the Enterprise. Now, if the Imperial Chemical Industries want an Enterprise that I ever knew of, then I don't know what is. You know, and uh, Uddersfield Corporation and Tramway... Now, the fact that, you know, being on Castle Hill is kind of like being on a starship because it's like De Lacey made it into a ship under the stars when he fortified it, ship shape, 
and then we get the first sea captain from the Mount Battens marrying into the family. His first, they create the first sea captains, it's like, almost like captain of the Enterprise. Now we've got Kirk. Now the thing is, what was protecting and round round wood is a forest, a woodland. It's very, it was very unusually described by Hob Kirk in that book. Hob Kirk, Hob Kirk in the book. He's surrounded by a wood. And one of the archaeological finds there, which is reported by um, James Benjamin in his dissertation at Bradford University, I think it might, I don't know if the actual axe is in the um, Tulsa Museum or not, but the find that was found near Round Wood is an axe. Oh, and here is Jean Luc Picard. Patrick Stewart, whom my mum went to school with. The next captain of the Enterprise. Now, to say that, oh, well, what's Star Trek got to do with Huddersfield? What's Star Trek got to do with Huddersfield? Who's that? John Scott. Bon Jovi. Someone knows all the significance the axe find, the wood. Right? Now, in this episode here, what actually happens, right? James T. Kirk. What actually happens in this Star Trek, if you've watched, because I used to watch it, th that is the main thing that I watched when I was a kid. You know, it was on every night all the time, right? What happens is, what happens to Kirk after all his adventures is that there is an incident and he's in this room in the in one of the starships and the side blows open the side of the spaceship and he's sucked out but he's sucked into this nexus it's like the next world it's like some sort of alternate dimension or universe where everything goes perfectly or everything happens perfect to how you will it to just so like um, you know, Bill, Bill, Bill Shatner, Will, Bill, Will, Bill, Bill Shatner. Everything goes to your will, right? Will, Bill. So everything in the next is bends to your will, right? And Kurt, um, Picard actually ends up in that nexus as well because he sat there having a Christmas do with his family, and all the kids are like, it's kind of weird because they're all, you know, like everything's going weirdly unusually perfect you know like in red dwarf when they've got like it the red dwarf splits into like the good and the bad dwarf and on the good one everything's like kind of too it's so good that it's kind of a bit unusual so they're in this nexus place and picard has to find i ain't actually seen it for a long time this is the first time i've looked at it actually it Picard finds Kirk to help him. Now, at some stage, Spock actually... Um, there's a different Star Trek, um, and this is what happens, to, what happens to Spock in the other Star Trek, is that there's going to be some other end of the world or end of the universe or catastrophe separately, and actually, Spock actually um, finds... He, uh, sorry, he builds a time machine... Spock actually builds this like time machine off something, this little kind of whizzing little rocket ship thing, and he can actually go back in time. Um, but that's a separate story to this one because they've not got it connected with this one. But this one is where it's the interaction between Jean Luc Picard and Kirk. So as it happens as it plays out now in the program is when kirk's in the nexus but according to this both people both got into the nexus at the exact same time so from kirk's point of view he just got there although it kind of looks like he's been chopping wood for ages and from john luke picard's point of view he just got there but what the writers have done there's no doubt whatsoever about this it is to do with the Warrior Mound, because it's, it is Kirk, Kirk Eaton, it's Kirk Wood. And the spaceship, the Enterprise, is spaceship like a giant mushroom. 
with two thrusters on and like the elongated thrusters like Castle Hill and Dunelm, right? And then, then the front bit, although they do it round, you know, it's called round wood anyway, but it, 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 there is the American and, you know, now it turns out that, you know, the British peers even own all the television production companies anyway, what Anonymous has shown recently, they're pretty much directing on anything, everything that happens, nothing happens that they don't have a say in or um, an opinion on or, or some sort of influence or control, which will go into that when we get into other things like, you know, Donnie Darko and stuff like that, which I don't really want to go into too much at the moment. So we've got, oh yeah, and there's another thing. George Higg Builder and Her Majesty's Government Kirkley's Council also built this charity place, which is called Kirkwood Hospice, which is right next to Roundwood. In fact, George Higg Builder's address is meant to be there, but when you look at it, there is no builders there. There is only the Kirkwood Hospice. He, he hasn't got a builder's premises there. That address is Kirkwood Hospice. You can't find his address because it's it's not there. And a lot of builders do this, have odd places and multiple companies like Ben Stephen Marsden has got about eight or nine different building companies um, for tax purposes, North Park Homes, all these other ones. They all do it. Kirkwood. Captain Kirk and a wood. And Hopkirk was the guy who first mentioned it in... The, in, in the Natural History of Huddersfield. So they've, they've, they've chosen, the, the characters are selected because of Hob Kirk and where it's Kirk Eaton. Before they even brought Patrick Stewart into it, it already had loose kit links. So we've got the axe. So we've got the axe motif that was found near Ramded, right? And we've got Kirk. Kirkwood, and he's in the wood now, chopping wood. And what you would have had, probably on that mound, would have been um, a village along with Castle Hill, prehistoric, because where else? That's what these sites are. They are the dwellings of the prehistoric people, you know, from before leading up to and, and, and b long before, when, when the Romans came over. So, and you you, t you have, if you go to Warminster, whoever called it Warminster, because you don't, you're not at war when you've got three ill forts all next to each other, because if you were if you were at war all the time with neighbouring tribes when you were all living next to each other, it would be ridiculous, right? Warminster, Scratchbury Hill, Middle Hill, and, Ax and um, Axbury Hill, right? All three hill forts, all right next to each other. There we go. But there are more. Cadbury. Cadbury hill fort. It's at the south. is dotted with them um, in large in large frequency and coverage. In fact, the south is covered in hill forts, probably as densely as uh, our area is covered in liberties because we've got one of, one of, besides Dartmoor and Wales and Scotland, we've got one of the largest coverages of liberties anyway. Um, but we don't have the largest coverage of hill forts. Ironically, Salisbury and Wiltshire is, is in lower density, according to biodiversity maps. But that's only one of the many different biodiversities, not taking into consideration oak trees and, um, you know, fir trees and birch and stuff, but here we've got uh, some trees here. So, you know, we'll play a bit more of this now. Oh, an axe! It's Kirkwood! Beautiful day. What just is that? Well, it would be a beautiful day, Kirk, if they hadn't absolutely shrapneled the area with Imperial Chemical Industries, Dalton, and now, oh yeah, uh, and all the way up the side of Castle Armbury, except for the last remaining bastion, which um, Tim Furler Dartmouth now is going to want him to build his Northern Powerhouse there and his HS2 railway line all the way up the country, which Extinction Rebellion are protesting up the whole way up and down um, and wanting to turn Huddersfield into a city with the last remaining beautiful bit of countryside they wanting to expand Kim Jing School and make the roads an absolute nightmare with kids to have more accidents, probably to add to the accident of the... the and, oh, and, a mur and an actual murder happened on the Roundwood. 
1988, mysteriously, yet in 1990, what happened at the Rose and Crown at Armanbury, where there's a strange sloping square outside it that is like um, the steepness of round wood with like a metal barrier around it. And it, I, I, that that is odd, if you ask me. Now the co-op are taking over it, but not the funeral director co-op depart division, the supermarket division of co-op. Because the co-op now has funeral um, division and it has the supermarket division. So if, if there are any mysterious murders around... Don't worry, the co-op will deal with it. Yeah, I wonder who owns the co-op and the shares in the co-op, according to Anonymous. Who owns the co-op funeral division and deals with the funerals when they're in dead bodies to, you know, deal with and get out of the way. I wonder who, if it could possibly be, BlackRock and Vanguard and the British Peerage taking over all the funeral directors, Inc. I wouldn't be surprised. But let's see what else Kirk has to say about it. Yes, it certainly is. It certainly is. It certainly is. It certainly is Earl Dartmouth. It certainly is. And there's a war starting off now. From Russia with love. But there ain't any love when there's nothing left of the countryside or the area of what it actually is. When it's turned into shrapnel. Because as far as I can see, they're sinking the ship. They're sending us under. All for the glory of progress. You will be the greatest. Who said that before? You Get Imperial Chemical Industries. Get all this city, town done up, then you will be great. Oh, wait, well, we were liberal, we were great when we were liberal, but now we're Labour and everyone's complaining town's a mess. No, but now we're going to regenerate the town and we will be great. Oh, we will be when we're the Northern Powerhouse, got the railway line up and then it's absolutely shot. Well, the more, more houses, where's left for the bit that's going to look nice? We will be. They never wanted us to be great. They never wanted the area to be great. They don't know what being great is. They are ruining it and destroying it in the name of being great when they know very well they're running it into the ground. Because great to them means the Kingsgate Centre with all these shops and all this tax revenue they're making and profits taxed to the government, which Gordon Brown sells the gold off then when it goes down in price, to the peers who own BlackRock and Vanguard, then it goes up in price gold. They make the tax money off the government, and then all the shops make the money. Who owns the shops in the Kingsgate Centre? And who made all the money from the university being built? I won't be surprised. We're being fleeced. They've never... Yorkshire Corporation never gave Huddersfield to itself. They gave it to King George. If they gave it to the people, then every single person would have been given a plot of land. S signed, sealed, you own that land. Each person would have owned land. No one owns it. It's owned by His Majesty, Her Majesty's government. It was never given to this field. It was taken off Ramsden because he was a liberal and his family took sides with the, the, the Whigs and the Roundheads when the um, government was overthrown by Cromwell and then it came back again and they didn't want this area to be liberal the water to turn it into a labour area and take it from the liberals and because of the history in the area and it is a beautiful area they didn't want it to be beautiful they, they sold us this is what they, they buy people off with money Oh, have, have some cakes, have some donuts, have some sugar. Here's some, you have some penny coins. Yeah, we don't want the donuts, the sugar. The, we want this area beautiful to enjoy it. That's what it is, a beautiful area. And I don't know whether this is mocking that or not with Kirk in the Woods, because this is what, you know, we would be... I think, I don't know whether this is, they, they ultimately want us like the Borg, the way it's going, we're going to end up like the Borg under total control, 
in, in the future see and this is what we're up against you know are we going to retain the area although they've already in, 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 there is no defeat in their eyes because they've already you know we've already lost they already did Roundwood they already did Castle Hill they already did the Reservoir at Dunelm they've already shrapneled all half of Armanbury we have you know it, it, it's we've lost and then this is the final insult is, is coming so I don't know what the irony in this situation is but it is the round wood it is the axe motif that was found there and it's Kirk and it's Uddersfield Jean-Luc Picard there is no doubt about it and you know I'm not saying anyone doesn't recognise that but it might have been a passing fleeting thought the significance of it is very very important and to be honest, I don't know what Barry Sheeman's playing at because Barry Sheeman is an... I do not think Barry Sheeman is... Um, he's out for himself as Sheeman. He's not out for this field at all. And I don't know how he gets voted in or why he gets voted in. Because our our all the way up till 1970, we were absolutely solid, solid liberal, except for that time when Labour got in to control for a very brief period. And what happened? We got done the dirty on. Oh. Captain. It's always captain, isn't it? Who is the real captain? So in number one, number two, number three. It as it turns out, everyone thinks that you know, go into Parliament and debate it. I'm an MP, I've got my free will to debate anything. And there are some female MPs who go in Parliament and are very strongly debating, they're passionately debating, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And news reporters, why can't we report on this? Why can't we report on that? It quietly gets taken off them. No, we're not doing that. You know, go in the naughty room and if you start talking like that, who's behind the scenes? We know who's behind the scenes, the people who own everything and the ones who are feeding the loop of the television and influencing advertising and telling people what they can and can't do so it's it's not a free country being liberal is free liberal is a true meeting of people who discuss things when they're not actually being influenced by tv and all the things around them being primed, and they can fairly debate it and talk about anything they want to talk about. But that's not the situation. The situation is that they've been told they're not allowed to talk about this, they're not allowed to talk about that. That's off limits, that's off limits, and they've already been influenced by this other force from outside of the box, which it turns out is... the peerage. So we're still under... There is no democracy... We're under a regime. We are under a regime and we'll be given a false sense of um, freedom. And we're all, they've got everyone addicted to all the products and stuff and, in the, and also claiming we need it because it's got to be progress or if not, we're going to end up Henry, chopping wood in the... Do you realise... Oh, do you smell something burning? Oh, yeah, Kirk, it was the bonfire that they had on there. In fact, they had multiple bonfires at the Jubilee and on Castle Hill. Why would you have a Jubilee on Castle Hill and one on the Warrior Mound? If the Warrior Mound wasn't significant for anything and didn't mean anything, why would you have a fire on it at the same time as Castle Hill? And why wouldn't Valley acknowledge that in his writing? Oh, and then there's the 1971 Criminal Damage Act that didn't come in until... Um, oh, 1972! Varley finishes his excavations in 1972 and publishes them, officially. And that's a year before that is when they publish the Criminal Damage Act where anyone who uh, has a right, privilege or interest, they can... Uh, it doesn't constitute as an offence, even if they might cause risk of harm to uh, objects or people with the use of anything, or actual damage or harm, or danger or risk. 
Um, except arson. Except burning. So, Kirk, I don't smell anything. It's you. Looks like somebody was trying to cook some eggs. Hmm. Come on in. It's all right. Now, does... You see, I think now... My opinion is that they're trying to... Uh, if everything... If they weren't pushing this Moorish progress of tech, if we'd have been left in the liberal constituency mindset and lifestyle, if we were like more like Oswestry and Dorchester, which I've made progress... And life's not bad there. In fact, it's great and beautiful. But this is, you know, the, the, they're trying to make out that, you know, why would you, you know, Kirk, you know Kirk, this is Kirk's nexus, having a perfect log cabin in the woods in peace and quiet in the perfect lifestyle. But they're trying to make a spin on it so that, you know, they're trying to make it look, come on, you know, this, you know, surely you want more than that in life. Um, you won't be content with that because they don't want us to have that and be content with that. They want to have the Enterprise ship and the Borg with us all under control. And that's the way we are going with a lot of the Elon Musk stuff. I'm not saying Elon Musk is bad, bad or not, but what I'm saying is you've got to be very... They're already, you've already got to know... What what's happening and how the controllers with the adverts and TV fast ads on 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 YouTube, you know slogans being blasted at us through the TV, things off limits for discussion, um what what's gonna talking about how they're controlling us and how they're doing it is off limits for discussion. Because the last thing the radio stations talk about on the TV is how. They can't exist without the adverts that are sponsoring their station. And now the messages in those adverts are all... And every company now is owned and controlled by Vanguard and um, BlackRock, which is the peerage. We're supposed to have a parliament that debate things freely on behalf of elected people. But what happens is the peerage own everything that dictates the material and influence that is imprinted on its Barry Sheeman's, its Nigel Farage's and its other representatives, Reese Mogg, and they will conform to that and debate it within that context. And it's all heavily under control like a game like a game board, like a playing board. They are the masters of the chess pieces. It's my house. At least it used to be. I sold it years ago. Mm, sold it years ago. So this is this is this is tied into Ramsden now when he sold up to Sam Copley, who and who handed it over for no profit to an act that was specifically created by King James, reading the text of it in great delight, um, specifically for enhancing and building... The, it wasn't given to the people. It was Imperial Chemical Industries, what, build a tramway out there, bang a cinema there, and then fill it in with houses, and then eventually, finally, um, they, 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 they built the houses on there. But it, it, George wasn't around when that happened. He, he had passed over to Elizabeth at that point. G finished it off. Captain Jean Luc Picard, the Starship. In fact, I think Prince Charles was about 20, according to. I think he was about 20 or 22 when they built on it. Enterprise. The clock. The, it's, it's, it is the Enterprise. It's all about the, the Enterprise, the Vanguard, the Black Rock. They, the they, they are all the Enterprises. I'm from. They are all of the Enterprises. Every Enterprise. Every business, all the shares, all the lawyers that you could use to defend yourself and make a case for your rights to prove your rights, like Extinction Rebellion are trying to do now, 
It's such a rebellion, and we need it the rights because the lawyers are ill advising them on it. Because the lawyers, all the big law firm companies, are all dictated to and directed by guess who? And it ain't Her Majesty's Queen Council. It's Black Rock and Vanguard. They are not going to give us the right. The right is given to us in the Bill of Rights when we enforce it. What you would consider the future. What well, I would consider the future is not what you con well, what you consider a complete total mess because you built a mess to make you didn't want it to be beautiful here. Yeah? And now that you made a mess, you're giving an excuse to regenerate it to make a lot more money out of every single thing that happens. Every single business, every single builder, everything, tax and revenue. It's just more, 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 more money. And now it's, no, 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 we're Emily Mast. And now it's the Royal Armouries, Imperial Chemical Industries. What's the next thing? <gasps> Power up Northern Powerhouse. Carry on as we're doing. Yeah. It made a complete and total mess of the place. Century. Butler. Butler. Are they actually taking the Picard or Picard there, saying that Picard's a butler? Because I starting to think now that they're actually that's actually you know um, Vanguard and um, Blackrock, you know, saying that Patrick Stewart's the butler. But if you want to be an actor, I guess you've got to take the knocks and puns. That's the whole point. You know, it might be funny. Yeah, the future, the future, Kirk, that they're absolutely going to annihilate and blitz the place because they don't want the history of our area to be acknowledged, understood or recognised because it cramps their style and, you know, we question what they're doing and why they're doing it. They don't want us to question what they're doing and why they're doing it or acknowledge that they exist in the capacity they do. They want us to believe that we've got these nice ministers representing our interests who are listening to us and care about what we think and then go debate it in Parliament. Not that the, the companies that we vote for, the franchises we vote for, Labour Conservative and probably like the Lib Dem now, are their franchises and companies just like all their different products and businesses are their franchises and companies and there is no democracy in different groups. It is all in their image and to their will, which means, ultimately, we are under a regime still, Kirk. We are under a fascist regime, I swear. And the illusion of freedom has been given to us. We're all little piggies with his faces in the troughs, happily nibbling the, um, you know, food that they're putting out in the supermarkets and, you know... Thinking, you know, even the MPs believe it. They're arguing, you know, even the some of the women ministers truly believe that they're, they, they're, they've got the right to debate what they want to do. Yet, they, when they walk into that room, they've been primed to the eyeballs and ear holes with the influencer broadcasting that the regime has permitted and directed. This is the past. This is nine years ago. The day I told her I was going back to Starfleet. Well, Starfleet is a problem, isn't it? That's one of the main problems. 
Starfleet, which is the celebrities, instead of being guided by the real stars in the actual sky for orientation and where we are, instead, we're now being directed and controlled by these celebrities who are all given a script, all told what to say. All the newsreaders are only allowed to do what the producer says, what's on the screen, and it's all controlled. And if you want, you know, there are some leniencies. Oh, you can joke about this, you can do that. We're getting more laid back. When we're actually not getting that more laid back because now more and more news programmes are propping up and they're not just telling the news and what's happening. They really do have an opinion now. Nigel Farage isn't asking you, he's telling you. Nigel's, Nigel's not just reporting on what's happened. If you haven't noticed, the news is no longer existent as we ever knew it. It is now the opinion of Nigel, the opinion of his guests. They are not asking us anymore. They're telling us because if they don't, then we'll be telling them through Facebook votes, messenger signatures, which we're blocked from doing. And, you know, keep it in the messages under the video, which are not recorded, acknowledged and submitted into Parliament. Now, if the messages and opinions underneath the videos were all recorded by the party who posted it and then all recorded and filed and sent into government and counted, then we would be talking. We'd be in business then, because why is it every single comment we're reading says that they're talking a lot of rubbish and they don't agree with them? That's the problem. And that represents people who aren't even voting as well. They're not even bothering to go to the ballot box, but they tell them that they don't agree with them on the videos, particularly with Faraz in there, whoever it is. These are Katarian eggs, her favourite. I was preparing them to soften the blow. I know how real this must seem to you. But it's not. This is... You could have fooled me, Picard, because you made it and filmed it. Maybe it's not really. <laughs> this, this, you know, Picard telling him that it's not real when he's an actor, and he's, he's not. It's not even real. Well, no, it's not real. It's a scripted program, Patrick. It's a story. You're in a studio on location. It's, it's, it's been scripted. It's not real life. But I can tell you what is real. That's an axe. That's Kirk Wood. And he's chopping wood. I can tell you that for a fact. Really your house. We are both of us caught up in some kind of temporal nexus. Deal. I beg your pardon. Do we? In the cabin. Second shot to the left. Behind the oregano. Notice how they bring the they do the door is kind of like the door is a little bit run down and old fashioned, and the outside is completely rustic and rural. But yet, as you move from that area of his house where the door is, where it's a little bit kind of like a little bit of run down, then you cross the threshold into this kitchen, which has very large extensive area and quite clean it's almost like when bill gates has just done that program in fact that took her that took her american talk show guy he had a wood background and then they've just recently changed it and he's, he's dropped that now um it was a bit too much dukes of hazard a bit too much rebel style and then um funnily enough bill gates um did his his um vaccine book program and he he had actually an all an all wood background in it and then actually i think russell brand russell brand's been using an all wood background as well i'm not saying that's relevant to this i'm just i'm just noting it that's how long have you been here i think russell brand did quite like this house so. i don't know it was for the enterprise b they said they don't know but then the the narrator at the start she said that they but according from their point of view they just arrived. So if from their point of view they just arrived, then surely they just thought they just got there. They've not actually been there and not known how long we've been there. That's why I don't get back that back. Control room. And 
The bulkhead in front of me disappeared, and then I found myself out there just now, chopping wood. You see, what's funny about this is that this is actually, that is your idea of, like, you know, sharing peace and loving, getting along with each other, because, like, Kirk's doing that, and then he's, he turns up, and then he just starts helping him out, and then he's telling him they're working together. This is like, you know, the ideal life that you'd have with a partner or someone, you know, like both helping each other out in the kitchen without arguing and just, like, sort of instinctively um, going through it together. Not like having, you know, um, some sort of um, Baron Munchausen guy um, having his waiters and servants sort of do it, um, fastening his pants up for him and, you know, putting his cuffs on and all that. What do you want to Look, uh, history records that you died saving the Enterprise B from an energy ribbon 80 years ago. You say this is the 24th century? Uh, and I'm dead? Not exactly. As I said, this is some kind of the temporal... Actually, if it had have been... 60 years ago, it would have been around the 1954-1955 from, from when, I think, from when it was filmed. And I'm dead. Not exactly. As I said, this is some kind of... The temporal nexus, yes, sir. I, uh, something... Well, to say that, Stuart's done, St Stuart's done quite well in helping him out, you know, um, blitz the town with modern architecture, taxation... Um, you know, cathedrals to taxation and profit. And to say that they and every single company in that Kingsgate Centre likely and not only making money off all the sales and business profits and shares, but also making money through the government, which then, once they rack up enough money, then Gordon Brown sells off the gold, which the gold was worth a lot anyway, but they present, you know, oh, that's the gold, it's dropped down in value now. Oh, we'll sell it off. Oh, now it's gone back up again. It's gone through the roof. In fact, the market's about to crash and gold, metals and minerals are going to be worth an absolute fortune, you know, even more now. When the market crashes, gold and silver is going to go, like, through the roof. Is missing. Quite a shame that the accent, that accent's probably going to be worth more than stocks and shares by the time we've finished. Captain, look, I need your help. Yeah, well, I am looking. That's the whole point. I am, I am looking. We are looking. That's what we're looking at. I want you to leave the Nexus with me. Unfortunately, Kirk's not helping um, anyone except himself getting into Jeff Bezos' spaceship, um, you know, going where no man's going before. He had to do it. He had to get in the spaceship, just like, you know, they had to build on the Ilfort and, 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 and ruin it. You know, it's like they had, they had to do it. They had to get on that Liberty symbol they had to get on that liberty sim symbol just like kirk had to get in that spaceship with bezos we have to go back to it's a shame you know it didn't happen it's a shame that they know exactly what is the right thing to do and what good is to do and they get all these heroes on tv and then you know it's like it's played out for us you know really we actually need we need bruce willis you know we need these heroes who are going to save us but then they always make out that oh no it's some terrorist in germany or some it's extinction rebellion they're the bad people and now we're going to bring a new terrorist law in when you know it's not always the real people behind the scenes who are pulling all the strings and preventing us from having liberty and freedom and everything to their glory and profit and control and when people in parliament aren't actually debating things freely and openly to what they otherwise would because they've been told what to do and say and are completely controlled by the feedback loop which has been put around them and strengthened and enhanced and you know you've, your freedom is played out in these films but behind the scenes when these actors go home it's just all about themselves we have to stop a man called Solon from destroying a star oh stop him from destroying a star now they've got all the stars in place telling us what to do. Come on down, the price is right. All the cheering audience, clap, 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 laugh, laugh, laugh. The fake, you know. Don't, you know, save the stars. Save, you know, don't save us. Save the stars. 
No, and it's all for us because we're going to make life better and, you know, you know, progress. Well, you're making a complete total mess everywhere. And all addicted to products which are causing environmental catastrophes. It, you know, there are some things, you know, that are a good idea and there's some things that are a bad idea. The lives are at stake. You say history oh, considers me. lives are at stake like the ones on that actual round road and the ones that there was in Cram. Like those mysterious happenings. And now we've got the co-op funeral department to deal with it all. And I wonder who owns that and controls it. Wonder where all those bodies go and get investigated by the coroner's department. Who owns the co-op funeral department? Shares soon, soon to be concluded. TBA. Who am I to argue with history? You're a Starfleet officer. You have a duty. Who am I to argue with history when they even tell you about it? You can not write half the stuff down, that's why. Don't go by what Valley says. He's already been disproved about eight times. I need to be lectured by you. you I was out saving you. the galaxy. You don't need to be. When your grandfather was... You don't need to be. We're all lecturing us through the movies. God, we're all sat there. We're all sat there in the cinema. We pay money to be lectured. You know? Go into the cinema. Get some money out. You know, give them some money. All those, all that, all those high-priced cinema foods, they were making a killing. You pay to see the movie that they prime you with... And affect you, the movie is not enjoyed, not, it's not real entertainment. It is there for your next prime, your next download of commands and informations and opinions. You know, you, they should be paying you to go see it. You know, you pay them, they make a profit, then you go see it for the film and you get primed with their stuff. And when you piss off about everything is going, because it's not going good for us. Then you got a little hero in the film, Bruce Willis, and now Bruce has got to go! With all these Extinction Rebellion places kicking off and truckers in Canada, everyone's starting to actually act like heroes. We can't have Bruce Willis and Tom Cruise running around anymore because then people might actually start wanting to be like them, which is now the same, they have to get rid of them, you know? But then what Tom Cruise does, instead of actually really saving the world from himself, um, you know, Ed Butt in the mirror, then he, what he does is goes in and sacks everyone. I'm Tom Cruise, you know, we'll sack everyone. Well, we'll think you're a cunt. Well, I don't care. I don't give a damn. <laughs> He's not bothered. And diapers. Besides which, I think the galaxy owes me one. Owes him one? Uh, well, he, they don't owe him one now. He's been up on Bezos' rocket, do they? Could probably always a couple of those teddy bears out of the arm grabber machine that was rigged to lose when it's like a, a skill and it's a skill game. You know, a skill and gambling game. You got actually you got to be able to win it with skill. I was like you once. So worried about duty and obligation I couldn't see past my own uniform. And what did it get me? Duty and obligation. An empty house. Ha! Huh. No houses are empty now. Everyone's got... Lo everyone's everyone's needing to get bigger houses because their houses are full of all stuff they've bought. Uh, you know, every, everywhere you look now, there's people trying to sell stuff on the internet, second hand on Facebook Marketplace. People have got... People are collecting that much stuff, that much gadgets, that much... Computer games, that many things. Everyone's got things now. Everyone's got things. But yeah, uh, but oh no, the, the people can't eat. They've got no food. Rubbish. Oh no, yeah, because they're putting the prices up through the roof when they already own everything and making all the profits off it. Another company sells more. This is a thing, right? Oh, it's Coca Cola versus Pepsi. Coca Cola are beating us. Pepsi are down in profits, you know? Well, you know, well, we're, we're, we're selling a lot of things now. Well, can't you put the prices down then? If we're selling a lot, can't you put the prices down? If business is doing well, oh, it's doing really well, we can put the prices down then. We're selling more of them. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter what we sell because you know, we own everything. So if we, if, 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 if you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter who sells what because it, at the end of the day, then we sell it, you know? <laughs> this time I'm going to walk up these stairs. March into that bedroom and tell Antonia I want to marry her. This time, 
it's got to be different. Funny because I had some stairs like that on the other house, and I actually I jumped, I fell or jumped, I kind of half fell, half jumped all the way down from the top to the bottom and landed on a plug socket without any shoes or socks on, and I didn't actually get injured. That was quite mad. Looks like this is as far as you get with this clip. I don't know if I'll be able to upload this anyway. I might have to speed it up or slow it down. That's it. That's all, folks.